that the U.S. government had sharing this with uh, Jason or Jennifer, can you give me a check? Can you see the screen? Yes. All right, I'll put yes. the presentation mode, put that down. I can also give you this if you want to use the pointer, and that can also maybe go forward and back. All righty then. Hi, I'm John Quarterman. I'm the Solani Riverkeeper. That's a project and a staff position with Walls Watershed Coalition, Inc., 501c3, formed in June 2012. Okay, so, um, oh, and that's my dog there. We call her Blondie. You can probably see why. Uh, that's one of our water quality testers on the Withacoochee River at Franklinville. And uh, what are we trying to solve? This is what we're dealing with. Uh, you don't have to actually know how to read these plates to see those don't look good. The control in each case is in the upper left corner, and uh, the other plates look like they've got smallpox. They shouldn't look like that if there's little E. coli in the water. The numbers we actually got at those three locations were very high. Um, the highest was more than 3,000 colony forming units to 100, per 100 milliliters. What does that mean? Well, according to Georgia EPD, we're going by basically, um, say it has a pointer, does it? Yeah, in the middle, there's a... Ah. So we're basically going by these numbers here. We'd like it to be less than 126, because that's supposed to be the geometric meaning for the month. And we'd really like it to be less than 410, because that's supposed to be, you don't want more than that in a single test. And the 1,000 number is uh, the Georgia Adopt the Streams alert limit. Like, if you see 1,000, you should try to find out what's wrong and do something about it. And what does this mean? The more E. coli, the more likely somebody's going to get sick from it. And we have people who are fishing, boating, swimming in these rivers year round. That, that's, that's another thing that we keep suggesting to EPD. We have no non-recreation season here. Uh, people are on our rivers the whole year. Anyway, uh, onwards. So, uh, and uh, Valdosta, Lots County, Barron County, Lanier County, and others are promoting ecotourism. We're doing, uh, I think this is going to be the fourth year of a thing called the Mayor and Chairman's Paddle on the Withacoochee River, downstream from where we're seeing these problems. Uh, so, you know, this is a picture from last year. And a lot of people fish in there, and people swim in there. Now, where were the samples taken? Um, where were the samples taken? Well, I'll, I'll show you in just a moment. Um, so, the, uh, you know, and nobody wants their well contaminated either. That's a big problem. Many of you have probably seen this figure before. It's out of the USGS publication. The, uh, this is basically where Shadrick Sink is. It's a big sink hole been there for decades on the west side of the Wipicoochee River. It leaks water underneath the river as far east as Alasta's drinking water wells. And Bell also had a choice some years back of pay for much more expensive treatment uh, equipment, chemicals, or sink the wells deeper, which is what they chose to do. But people with their own private wells downstream, mm, they don't really want to have to do that. And uh, so that's another complication. And it's not just Shadrick Sink. There's another one called Cherry Creek Sink which opened up in 2013 in a matter of months. That's in the Withacoochee River. And that's uh, Dr. John Dennisman standing there in the bottom. He couldn't come today. He's a professor. He's got stuff he's doing over at BSU. So uh, and that has the same issue. OK, so here's a partial answer to your question of where. Uh, we normally test at uh, Franklinville, which is where the first picture was. We test at US 41 North Valdosta Road. And uh, we uh, test several spots downstream. Valdosta tests three times a week at US 41, at Georgia 133, at USA 4, and three more locations downstream, which come into a different story. But uh, for right now, when we're doing the when we're doing the creek testing, which we have piloted, we're also testing a, a bunch of other locations. There's um, 
uh, one called, uh, we didn't test on this particular good, but one called Tom's Branch that comes into the Withacoochee just downstream of Franklinville. And there's uh, uh, Beaver Dam Creek. We've got three locations. Those are in and upstream of Race City. I'll show you a map in a moment. And then we've got uh, Baby Branch, which comes out of Moody Air Force Base. I'll show you a map of that in a moment. And those, Baby Branch and Beaver Dam flow in Cat Creek, which comes into the Withacoochee River a bit farther downstream from Franklinville. And uh, as I mentioned, then we also, uh, and on the Withacoochee, we often test at uh, Skipper Bridge. The equipment failed was I pulled my bucket up and the bottom fell out. <laughs> and uh, we test at uh, Staten Road and at US 41, and as I mentioned, other places downstream. Before you uh, move away, uh, the significance of the sinkholes, or you're saying that the, uh, the coal, E. coli is wound up in the groundwater for the sinks? Or yes. That's, yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it also leaches in the groundwater just from the river bottom, but the sinkholes may be even more so. The sinkholes also present some flow issues because the flow at State Road in the river is often much higher than at US 41 because the sinkholes are in there. And there's also, of course, the flow issues of if it's high in the creeks, does that really affect the river? Because the river should have more flow. Well, yes and no. First of all, if it's really high in the creek, it's going to affect the river. Second of all, right now, the flow out of uh, Sugar Creek out of Valdosta is more than the flow in the Withacoochee River because of the recent rains and all that impervious surface in Valdosta. And yes, there's sometimes a problem in Sugar Creek. It's a different problem we're not addressing with this particular project. Um, I have some compliments for the city of Valdosta at the moment. Shots might be bad. Uh, okay, so. What we'd like to do is fix the problem. Be better than just reporting it, which is uh, which was the point of that slide. We do a report like this every uh, week, um, and also some automation would be good because it's got the typos on there. Those should have a V in front instead of the W. V for Valdosta. I typed it in wrong. I fixed it later. So we need to automate picking up Valdosta's data and sticking it in this composite spreadsheet. Okay, this gives you a, an overview. Uh, Beaver Dam Creek is way up here, going out of uh, Ray's Mill Pond through Ray City, and right at the bottom of Beaver Dam Creek, where it comes into Chat Creek, is Ray City's wastewater treatment plant, which so far does not look like it's the problem uh, because uh, we get higher numbers on Beaver Dam Creek than we do downstream on Cat Creek. Uh, you know, we have to do more testing to be sure, but so far it doesn't look like it's the problem. And um, over here, down towards the bottom right, that's Baby Branch coming out of Moody Air Force Base. The wastewater treatment plant is between Bemis Road and uh, Baby Road. And indeed, the numbers are often higher at Baby Road. But, two things. We also get high numbers at Bemis Road which puzzles everyone, including me. Why should we be seeing that? What's on the base to be calling that, causing that? We don't know yet. And um, the, uh, uh, that wastewater plant is actually operated by Lowndes County. I was just talking to the utilities director yesterday, uh, excuse me, Monday, and he says their numbers at the outfall are always good. So what's going up? It could be wildlife. That's the kind of thing we're trying to find out. Those, as you can see, Beaver Dam comes into Cat Creek up there. Baby Branch comes in down there. We go into the Coochie River. And Dallas is downstream from there. And yes, we test upstream from Cat Creek, which is why we think it's mostly coming out of Cat Creek. We do sometimes see high numbers upstream on the Withacoochee, which would be a different problem, which we can also look for. Is it all E. coli or E. coli? Uh, our tests can only do E. coli. However, Valdosta tests also fecal gold farm, and what alerted us to this problem is Valdosta frequently sees high numbers at US 41 of both. That's how we got onto this problem in the first place. 
Huh? Okay, <clears throat> we're supposed to say, how does this fit with the council's vision? Well, I hope it does, because support the state and region's economy, ecotourism, fishing, okay? Protect public health and natural resources. Uh, I hope if we can get rid of some of that E. coli, it would do that. It's not good for wildlife as well as people. Enhance the quality of life for all citizens. Yes. Preserving private property rights. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not going on anybody's private property without permission. In fact, so far, we're not going on anybody's private property. And we're not going to accuse anybody of anything. Right? If we compile enough information, we'll approach the property owner and say, this is what we're seeing. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, the rest of it, I'm not entirely sure what uh, need to enhance resource augmentation and efficiency opportunities means, so I don't know whether it does or doesn't. Uh, Y'all be the judge of that. Okay, Beaver Dam Creek, uh, as I mentioned, it's probably not Ray City, wastewater treatment plant, probably. Uh, the Ray City also has a chronic problem of leaky sewer lines. Now, I'm, I'm not you know, casting aspersions at Ray City. They're working on it. They have an ARPA grant. I hope they succeed. But this will help if they're having leaks they don't know about. Maybe we can find them. Beaver Dam Creek, um, it might actually be coming out of Ray's Mill Pond. Or we get high numbers often at the first bridge below that. What's in between? Um, some agriculture, which I've heard a tip might be fertilized by chicken manure. And between there and the next one, 129, which is Main Street, there's a bunch of woods and ponds. Could be geese, could be wild hogs, could be deer, could be cows nearby. And then you get down into Ray City proper, could be leaky sewer mains, could even be the wastewater plant. Baby Branch, as I said. Is, is um, all of Ray City on sewer, or they some of them on? I think there's some septic out in the edges. Um, in particular, there's a, I don't think it's on here. There's a new subdivision that I'm pretty sure is on septic. Do you know if there are LAS down there, or, or do they have spray fields someplace? They do, it's, it's right here on the map. Right here, bottom left, it's labeled Ray City WC, WBCP. And yes, we've been talking to them. They say their tests are good too. I have no reason to doubt them. And in fact, in this case, their evidence backs them up. Okay, um, our evidence is not necessarily backing up the Moody wastewater plant, but as I say, there's Places in between where other things could be getting into it. Also, uh, I forgot to mention there's a golf course right next to the creek. And it's actually not even just the Wittapuchi River, because we've detected problems in the Alapawa near the uh, Alapawa wastewater plant. Uh, one of our testers, Heather Brazel, you may have run into her. She does the Gaskin Stars Education Center. And she can test on um, the Outflow Creek from uh, on here. And she also tests, uh, here she used the pointer, so those of you who don't like can see what I'm pointing at. She can test here, that's where that high number was, and she tests about here, upstream from US 82. How does she do that? She owns the land. She also owns several miles of the river of the Lapa downstream on both sides. Okay, so um, what could it be? Wastewater treatment plants, leaky sewer lines, septic tanks, wildlife. You may wonder, geese? Yes, we've actually dealt with a case of that recently on a pond downstream on the Withcoochee River. And uh, Adel supposedly has a geese problem. We've not verified this, but we've been told. And wild hogs, um, this is where the Swanee River, Swanee River Water Management District has been very helpful. We know that, um, uh, excuse me, the wild hogs actually we found with our own DNA test. I'll come back to the district in just a moment. 
domestic pets, uh, uh, those would show up in this one river water management uh, DNA marker test. Cattle, sheep, chicken, manure, or something else. And DNA tests are very important for this. Okay, there is existing trend testing uh, toward DPD tests every river a couple times a year that doesn't catch this kind of thing, which you mostly see after high rains. And uh, the SGRC seed grant project, the Fremont is also too late to detect this. And uh, Lowndes County's been doing quarterly tests uh, as required for their stormwater permit. Their 2021 report says, we've not identified any point sources. We think it's maybe natural. I just picked up their report for 2022. Says the same thing, and it also says, we don't plan any new best management practices. Now, I think they can't tell what it is because they're not doing DNA tests. So that, that's the thing that we're going to do that they're not. They're also only testing quarterly, and they're only doing three tests for each location in one month per quarter. So they also have a frequency issue. Hey, John, just real quick. I slid lunch by a few minutes. We do need to save some time for Gary. I'm moving along. So if you can wrap this up in a couple of minutes, please. So this is what we test. It's basically the uh, adopt the stream standard test, which includes dissolved oxygen. And uh, the DNA marker tester will probably be PFAS, possibly lead. Um, why PFAS? Because back in 2016, Moody reported that uh, Beatty Branch and the ground near it was contaminated, like every other Air Force base in uh, Georgia. And there's also been PFAS found in the Withcoochee River by us. We participated in a nationwide uh, survey by uh, Waterkeeper Alliance. The good news is it's much less than many rivers. The bad news is it is in there. The, um, it's also been found in fish in the lap bottles and us, somebody else. So um, once we have uh, found the problem, we will discuss this with the potential source. Once we have evidence, we, you know, we don't do this without evidence. And in uh, Brooks County, with this is where the Swanee River Water Management District was extremely helpful. Their DNA test narrowed it to ruminants. Now, there's only two giraffes in the area. They're not in Brooks County. There are sheep, not enough. If it's deer, why not upstream and why never only lap rods that night? We did further testing. We finally went to the owners who were shocked and horrified, wanted to be part of the solution, and have been. The fence, the cattle back away from the waterways, that revegetated the uh, fence rows, and that even shipped cattle elsewhere to reduce the population. And all we've done is we never mention their name because we don't want to give them a bad reputation. We want to give them a good reputation if they ever do want to be mentioned. They are part of the solution. Now, we do involve EPD if we have to. Um, for example, we were very involved in what ended up with an enforcement order on Valdosta, which is why they test three times in a week. And we followed up. I'm almost done. No, no, no. They're having an audio problem online. So I'm trying to diagnose my slide. For example, there was a recent occasion of after uh, another spill, Valdosta didn't send a report to EPD for four days, a written report. Um, and EPD says, could you send those faster, please? Because people ask, and we need to know. Now, the really good news is um, the utilities department's under new management, sitting right here. And since the new management reports, correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but I believe that the most recent one after a spill went in the same day, both press release to the public and the written report to EPD. And the spills since the change in the administration have been much smaller. So there's good news out of Mount Austin. I mean, the spills were already much smaller than they were that huge tank back in December 2019, but now they're even better. I told you I was a compliment to Mount Austin. Still back in the Excuse me? It's still back in the No, it's much better. <laughs> And I complimented the district, too. Did you hear that? Yeah. I hope you all heard some of that, because I'm supposed to hurry along. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so there's a whole bunch of management practices, the most obvious ones, collect water quality data. Okay. And now you want to compare them to sources. Yep. Analyze impaired segments and sources. Yep. And then um, if it's we skip one. Ah yes, here we are. Um, if it's human, which is where the DNA markers come in, because that will determine if it's human. Then um, then uh, is it septic tanks? Is it the wastewater plant, one or more? And engage local governments at that point. And it could also be about stormwater education. So those are obvious. And it's agriculture, the two big ones are non point source nutrient loading and integrated planting, not just nutrients, but also other impairments, other NPS impairments. And depending on what we find, there's a whole bunch of possibilities. Notice buffers, as in uh, forest and buffers, and um, last stock exclusions from the streams and rivers, what we we're just talking about, and there's a bunch of others that we could recommend. Uh, we do not build fences, we do not go out and plant vegetation next to the fences, we recommend. And our experience thus far has been, nobody wants to be causing this. In, you know, any agriculture operation that if we go with, with evidence, they'll want to be part of the solution. That's our experience so far. Okay, so that's um, who the people are, uh, principal investigators, Professor John Dennisman, Professor of Geosciences at Dallas State. There's us, you know, Savannah Riverkeeper, who handle you Know Your River. What's that? It's a geographical information system, which should make all this much easier instead of by hand putting something into a Google Sheet and by hand producing reports. It makes all that much easier and brings in much more information. That's why I know your river. Know your river is not the point. The point is solving the problem. Know your river just helps do that. Um, so I'm done. John, uh, as far as E. coli goes, how does it, so if you do DNA testing, like a lot of E. coli in humans is from bovine, I mean, how do you differentiate what's past through the foods that was E. coli in the bovine and what is typical human? We haven't actually seen it coming through like that. The difference between um, after that December 2019 spill, the human markers were quite high in the district's downstream test. But after about three weeks, it changed to vote to ruminants. Uh, their particular test doesn't actually say which ruminants. Uh, the DNA test that we're using does say cattle are, are not. So we haven't actually seen that confusion in the DNA markers. Any more questions? There's one thing about Valdosta. Valdosta has spent a lot of money in the last few years mm -hmm. bringing that up to date when they had that old sewage disposal in the river. Mm -hmm. Upwards of $100 million and still more and still... Uh, I was on the Jeep board and we loaned them a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Yep. They got our to start two more projects in about four weeks to try to. But we were called, we were called to come down because Tiff County was flooding Battle Austin. <laughs> I, I remember that. That was pretty funny. You, well, you had that meeting that we had when they called us down to tell us that we put Tiff County flooded in uh, Battle Austin. I don't think I was in the meeting, but I saw the slides. But that city manager, as you know, is not there anymore. Yeah, he's not there anymore. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> so, John, you guys are going to submit uh, a proposal for a city grant. That's right. Um, but he's head of the whole state now. <laughs> and it will mainly go to support the uh, Know Your Rivers um, side of that for compiling data. A lot of it goes for the testing. Yeah because we're going to have materials and we're also not talking about actually paying the testers a small sum because we need dependability and you know, some for organizing the whole testing operation. Let, let, let me ask you something. That sinkhole that was up there next to 41, mm -hmm. is it still there? Uh, Shattered sink's still there. It's been there for decades. I, I remember Riding by there one day and then coming back the next day and there was one 
big sinkhole there. Right that's been several years ago. There's been several of those opened up recently over on Shiloh Road, for example. But you look not along the sides of, of that, and I don't know how deep it was, but you could see way down there and see the water, and on the side there, that thing was full of, uh, it, it, was, it was yellow all the way down. The shutter sank, the, the pit it sends about 32 feet when it's dry and you walk into the cave. I think I'm getting the hook. <laughs> so unless y'all got more questions, I'm going to move along. I was going to ask you that. Um, Gary, are you online? Can you hear us? Yes, sir, I can. Um, Thanks, John. Do you have any flexibility? I mean, we have an option depending on Gary's availability. We can either have lunch brought in now and then ask Gary to present while we're. Or we get whatever he wants to do. Yeah, so up to you, Gary. 